Hello friends and welcome back to The Dork Side. I'm the dork in the road and this is my 1,000 mile review of my 2022 Kawasaki KLR650 Adventure. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet writing buddy, so please consider subscribing. I have owned this 2022 KLR650 Adventure for two months now. I've put almost 1,200 miles on it, and in that time, I've ridden it over the mountains. Uh, I've gone moto camping three different times. I've had it in muddy, crappy, soggy Pacific Northwest rainforest gravel roads. I've ridden it to the top of a mountain. I've done some loose, rocky, sort of abandoned logging roads. This review will be sort of in terms of how it does those things that I think the vast majority of riders will use them for. Obviously not the most extreme version of everything ever because it's a KLR. So before I jump into the pros and cons and kind of my feelings on it, just for those of you that might be unfamiliar with the 2022 KLR, a few of the features that are specific to this model. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time running down every single spec because it's a KLR. They haven't changed that much in the 30 plus years they've been around. But uh, let me tell you what's new on the 2022. The biggest upgrade, the biggest difference between this 2022 KLR and all the other KLRs out there is that this KLR has fuel injection. That was the big upgrade for this year. This bike is the adventure package. So it has the side cases. It has uh, the fog lights it has the crash bars it has the charging ports on the dash so it's got a 12 volt and a usb charger uh, but other than that it's the same as the other two the traveler and the regular base model 2022 klr uh, they made a few engine improvements in 2022 it's got more mid-range torque the exhaust is slightly different they made some adjustments to the clutch and the transmission switched out the battery and added a higher output alternator the foot pegs bars and seat are all now rubber mounted which is supposed to cut down on vibrations and they made some changes to the body including a new windscreen, a new fairing design, a slightly reshaped seat, a new dash, a longer swing arm, and it's supposed to add a little bit more stability to the bike. The bike is also slightly heavier than the previous models at 460 pounds. Other than those things, it's a KLR, it's a KLR, it's a KLR. They've been around for a long time. So before I jump into what I think about the bike and my time with it, let me just answer the number one question that you're probably already typing into the comments. What about the doohickey? Did they fix the doohickey? Supposedly they upgraded the cam chain guide with a little bit stronger material and they made the spring, the tensioner spring a little bit stronger. That is their version of fixing the doohickey. That's what's different for the 2022. The experts on the doohickey and a lot of other people seem to think that's not enough. That doesn't fix the problem. They did make some changes, but according to Eagle Mike, the godfather of the doohickey himself, it's not enough to fix the problem that continues to occur, but I guess only time will tell. It's a long-term wear out problem, not a spontaneous failure type problem. So we don't really know. As far as what I'm going to do about the doohickey, which is the second most common question that I get. My plan is to not do anything to this bike while it's under warranty. So I'm not going to mess with it for at least a year. Even Eagle Mike himself says that you can go 5,000 miles without doing it. If I hit 5,000 miles before a year, I'll think about it very seriously. But while it's under warranty, my plan is not to mess with it. Also, I've done a few mods to the bike, so it's not in stock form anymore. I have a video that covers all those, so I won't bore you with the details, but I will link it. And I'll also put a list of all the mods I've added to the bike in the description below. What do I like about this bike after 1,200 miles of riding it? Well, one, this bike is so easy to ride. It is an incredibly unintimidating, easy to handle, really confidence inspiring, just sort of gently cradling you and carrying you to adventures and through over and around whatever it is you're trying to get through over and around. When I first started looking at motorcycles, I thought the KLR was way too tall. And I will admit to you that if there is one intimidating factor, it's that seat height. But if you can handle the seat height or you understand that it's not as bad or as intimidating as it feels off the bat. This bike is very easy to ride on gravel, on the highway, in the city, wherever you want to ride it. The power will not surprise you. You're not going to spin the back wheel if even unless you're trying to. I really like how easy it is to adjust the suspension, which I made a whole video on for you, which I'll link for you, but it's just a 12 millimeter bolt on one side and a flathead screwdriver on the other. I have not had a bike that that was that easy to adjust. It's also very inexpensive. Like if you're trying to get out there and get into a motorcycle that'll do basically everything, adventure, dual sport, whatever it is you want to do, this thing, MSRP $8,000, you cannot beat it. That is one of the best values in all of motorcycling. For eight grand, this bike will do anything you could possibly want it to do and then some, and it'll last you forever. So the price point I think is good for this motorcycle. Another thing I really like is how easy it is to move around. This sounds like a weird thing to say, but like I had an Africa Twin before and it was top heavy. And every time I kind of moved it around the garage, it just really felt like I was putting all my weight and all my strength into moving it. 
You pop this thing into neutral and it is as easy to wheel around and maneuver as my DRZ is. And that is saying something because sometimes, you know, you hit those dead end logging roads or there's a tree across the road and you have to turn around. It is sure nice to have a bike that you feel comfortable and confident wheeling around or whatever it is you need to do. This bike weighs 460 pounds, but it doesn't feel like it to me. It's pretty easy to move around. And that's one thing I really, really love about it. The maintenance on this bike is very easy. I did the oil change. There's also a video of that, which I'll link for you. It doesn't require a lot of maintenance. The intervals are very long. Most people will change the oil on this thing once a year and not even hit their minimum mileage. And the other thing about maintenance is it is forgiving. And we know this because the KLRs have been around forever to people who don't do maintenance well or often. So if you're a person that just wants to ride and you forget about things like oil changes and chain lube, stuff like that, this is a bike that's gonna be great for you. All Japanese bikes are kind of like that, but it'll just keep on going no matter what. They say you can't kill a KLR on purpose. So you're sure as hell not gonna do it by accident by forgetting to change the oil once in a while. Just check it because supposedly they can burn oil. I haven't had that problem yet, but it's a new bike. If you're a lazy or incompetent mechanic, I'm both. It's still a bike that you can handle and uh, it's, it's friendly and forgiving to those types of things. The KLR is like a cockroach of a motorcycle. It'll last forever and you just can't say that about a lot of its competitors. I like the big flat dual sport style seat. It's great for moving forward and backward on when you're on a long ride and you want to kind of shift your position. You're not sort of stuck in one position like you are in a bike with a two tiered seat, but also it's great for strapping gear to. Spoiler alert from one of the cons, but I don't like the side cases a lot for moto camping. They're just, they're a weird size and they're not quite big enough for the way I like to camp. But because that seat is so wide and flat, I can easily strap two giant loop dry bags to the top of it and carry a ton of gear on this motorcycle. And it's got that big rear platform, which gives you even more space for gear. It's like it's designed for carrying camping gear. Weird. I like the seating position a ton. It feels like a big dual sport bike because it is. My knees are not super bent. The pegs are pretty far from the seat because of the the seat height, which is a very comfortable long distance riding position for me. You sit upright, you can see up over the bars. It's definitely a motorcycle you feel like you're sitting on and not one that you feel like you're sitting in. And aesthetically, and you can argue with me on this one because it's 100% subjective, but I think it looks cool. So that's what I like about it. Here's what I don't like about it. It'll do freeway speeds, it'll do 75 fine, but you know, there are more comfortable motorcycles. If you're gonna go out and do hours and hours and hours on the freeway, why the hell are you buying a KLR in the first place? You know, get yourself a street bike or an actual touring bike, but it's fine, it's capable, it's not uncomfortable, it's just less comfortable than some of the other options out there at freeway speeds. But people wanna act like it won't do freeway speeds at all and that's an absolute misconception. I did 75 yesterday, it's not a problem. It'll do 65, 70 on the highway all day, 75 on the freeway, even 80 if you need to to pass, 80, 85, I just would cruise at it the whole time. It would be nice to have more passing power, so it's a 650 which is plenty for highway speeds, but if you wanna pass somebody, you gotta get a little bit of a run at it. Not every car is a Corvette. I've had plenty of Honda Civic hatchbacks that you know had 1.3 liters of power. I could still pass people, you just have to prepare for it. And the KLR is the same way. It's not unlimited warp drive on man like you know a leader bike would be you still can pass people but it's not something that you can just drop a gear and disappear like you can on bigger bikes it's not again it's not for that riding on the highway in a klr is the means to an end it's not the end you don't buy a klr to ride it on the highway but you can ride it on the highway to get to where you're going no tachometer which sucks but again it's a budget bike so what do you expect i will say something specific to the 2022 the efi is really twitchy when you throttle all the way off and back on there definitely is a little bit of a herky jerkiness that happens if you cut the throttle all the way and then bring it back on. My 250L was the same way, but if you're standing up and you, you know, throttle off all the way, it can throw you forward a little bit. It's a little bit surprising. So that twitchiness is kind of annoying. It's not unbearable. I'm nitpicking for cons on this bike because I'm pretty happy with it overall, but that's one to be aware of. Another super nitpicky thing is the USB port on the left side has this big rubber cover on it and it just does not like to stay in place. It bounces loose a lot. It's attached, so it's not going anywhere. It's just, if you're trying to get a mostly waterproof seal and a downpour, it'd be nice if it stayed in place a little bit better. The side cases, this is specific to the adventure, but they're 22 liters a side, which is great for day trips. They're fantastic for taking my tools and survival gear, everything I like to take when I'm exploring in the backcountry by myself, my lunch, some extra water, whatever. But for moto camping, they are a weird size. And if I have my tools and stuff in there, which I like to take moto camping, I don't have a lot of room for other gear. I'm actually gonna swap these out for some Rocky Mountain ATV tusk pannier racks as soon as they're available, because I miss my giant loop 48 liter round the world panniers. I wanna go back to those. 
Locking side cases have their advantages. I just did a trip to the coast where I had my Switch and my Kindle and a few more valuable items, and it was nice to know that they were in a locked case on the back of the bike. But for the most part, I don't really like the side cases for moto camping. So if you only want a moto camp or you want to moto camp a lot like I do, maybe don't get the adventure model. I would think very carefully about it. That's all I'm saying. The stock handguards are just deflectors. They're not handguards. They offer you no protection for your levers. Uh, they're there to keep the wind off your hands and that's it and look cool. And they don't even look that cool. So those are annoying and I kind of wish they hadn't included them or they'd included some actual proper handguards. That'd be neat. Stock tires are okay. They're better than I expected, but they're not amazing. I don't think they're going to last very long. I've got a thousand miles on them and I don't know how much longer I'll have them on here. They've actually been okay in the muddy stuff that I've been in. They do okay on the gravel, but I just don't like the tread pattern. It's not very deep. They're obviously cheap. They're great on the road. They're fine, but they're not my favorite tires. Dock skid plate is plastic, which is better than nothing, but just barely. It's at least a little bit thicker plastic. It's not like the drinking straw material that like my CRF250L skid plate came with. The kickstand on this thing leans over so far I actually have to get on and off on the high side a lot. I like to step up on the peg to get on the bike and it is hard when it's leaned way over to do that. The angle's just funky. So this bike leans farther over than any bike I've ever had. There are some advantages to a shorter kickstand. It's easier to get it down on uneven terrain, but man, that lean is something. You definitely feel it. You'll notice it the first time you sit on one. And my last complaint is the stock foot pegs. Not only are they rubber mounted, but they're like rubber topped. I guess they're great if you're gonna ride on the highway all day, but who buys a KLR to ride on the highway all day? Those rubber ones are Slippery, they flex too much, didn't like them, they're gone. One of the first mods I would recommend if you get a KLR of your own. Those are the pros and cons of the bike. What are my overall impressions? What's the bottom line? What do you need to know if you're thinking about buying a KLR 650? Well, this is the part where you expect me to say, well, it's really hard to ride on the highway. It's not really hard to ride on the highway. I get that question a lot, and I think the people that talk about the KLR who say it's fat and slow and incapable, all of that stuff are people who've never owned or ridden one. They look at the stat sheet, they see 40 horsepower, and they think, well, there's no way that can do anything. And it's just not true. This is a very capable bike and highway speeds included. It'll do 75, it'll do 80, it'll do 85 if you need to, to pass somebody. Yeah, there's a little vibration, but it's not unbearable. People act like it's just impossible to ride this thing on the freeway. And like, is it as comfortable as my Africa Twin was? No but it's like 10% less comfortable, not like 50% or 100% less comfortable. It's totally doable, especially if you know what you're getting yourself into. I think the whole it doesn't go on the highway freeway thing is way overblown. Don't let that dissuade you from getting it. Anyone that's owned one will tell you that this is a bike that is so much more than the sum of its parts. It is so much more than what it looks like when you look at a stat sheet. It is a dual sport bike. It handles like a dual sport. It feels like a dual sport, but it has adventure bike capability and a dual sport bike price. This bike can do literally anything. It'll do anything any other bike will do, just slower. It'll get you anywhere that a KTM 1290 or a Honda Africa Twin or a Husky 701 or a Tenere 700, it'll get you anywhere that all those bikes will get you just slower. There's nothing those bikes can do that this bike can't do. Can't do it as quickly, can't do it as capably, can't do it as easily maybe in some cases, but it is a very easy to ride, very confidence inspiring, very unintimidating, very capable motorcycle that will take you anywhere you want it to take you. Period. That's what it is. That's what the KLR is, and the whole damn thing costs $8,000. If you want to travel, ride gravel roads, do BDRs, hit up some light trail riding, or do anything in between, you want to carry camping gear and see America, you want to ride from Argentina to Alaska and camp along the way, this motorcycle will do it. It's one of the most popular and longest lasting dual sport bikes of all time for a good reason. The KLR is more transportation than entertainment, but it will transport you anywhere you want to go and you will have a good time getting there. It's not the smoothest, sexiest, or most refined bike out there. It's just a motorcycle, a whole motorcycle and nothing but a motorcycle. But in terms of bare bones, pure distilled motorcycleness with no frills, that's what the KLR 650 is. This is a true hybrid between an adventure bike and a dual sport, but kind of the best of both worlds in a lot of ways. No regrets whatsoever with this purchase. And that includes selling my Africa Twin and transitioning to this bike. Very happy with it and think I will continue to be happy with it for a long time to come. My overall review is very positive. And if you're thinking about one, it's in your price range and you like the way it looks and feels, get one. Or at least go test ride the damn thing because I think you're gonna be surprised like I was 
how capable and fun it is. So that's a lot, I know. Um, it's a very thorough and long video, I apologize, but I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about this bike, and I want to make sure that I cover as many bases as possible. But if I miss something or you have questions about the KLR, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you want more from the 2022 Kawasaki KLR 650 Adventure, I have a whole playlist of my riding videos, my camping videos, and all of my sort of maintenance and why I bought it and those types of videos. I will link that for you below and also hopefully up here. So check out the full KLR 650 playlist if you haven't. But for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching, and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Thank you. Excellent! Yay! Diet Pepsi time. Ugh.